Fordingbridge Messy Church here in the beautiful New Forest. I hope you're all working well during the lockdown and managing to have some fun as well. Today I'm going to be talking about one of the Psalms from the Old Testament part of the Bible. The Psalms were written by King David. If you remember he was King of Israel over 2,000 years ago. As well as being a really good king he also played the lute and wrote songs. Some of these songs are the Psalms we read in the Bible. You probably know him best from the story of how he killed the giant Goliath with just a catapult and a stone. One of my favourite psalms is Psalm number 15 and I'm going to read it to you from the New International Version of the Bible which is a little bit easier to read than the King James one. Lord, who may dwell in your sacred tent? Who may live on your holy mountain? The one whose walk is blameless, who does what is righteous, who speaks the truth from their heart, whose tongue utters no slander, who does no wrong to his neighbour and casts no slurs on others, who despises a vile person but honours those who fear the Lord, who keeps an oath even when it hurts and doesn't change their mind who lends money to the poor without interest, who doesn't accept a bribe against the innocent. Whoever does these things will never be shaken. Of course, we can't know what music, if any, that David played to it. The song at the beginning of this messy church is a modern version of it set to music. The words of the psalm are quite tricky. They're old-fashioned and difficult for you to understand, even though it is a more modern version. This is one person's attempt to make it even more understandable for us today. God, who gets to live at your house? How do we get an invitation? Walk straight, act right, tell the truth. Don't hurt other people. Don't blame other people. Despise those who are really nasty. Keep your word even when it costs you to do so. Make an honest living and never take a bribe. You'll never get a bad name if you do this. It's kind of like the commandments that God gave to Moses, isn't it? We're going to do a very simple craft activity today to help to remind us of how to follow Jesus. A prayer for our children to follow Jesus. Lord, I praise you as the giver of life. You've created all children and know every hair on their heads. You love them beyond measure and you have a plan for each and every one, a good plan. So Lord, today I pray for all children. I pray that they reflect you in their everyday life. You've called them the salt of the earth. May they remain filled with flavour all of their days and not be distracted from their purpose by the things of the world. Their lives are marked as a light of the world. May this light never be hidden, but rather shine brightly of you, your hope, your love and your truth. And as they shine in their words and actions, may they always give all the glory to you. I pray all of these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. There, 
we're all ready for our making part of Messy Church today. I've got lots of things in front of me. We're going to be making memory bracelets, or you could make them as a necklace, or even as a cross that you might want to wear, or to hang somewhere to remind you. Our memory bracelets are about remembering all of those things that God asked us to do in Palm 15. The first thing we're going to look at is the range of different materials you can use. You might have some of these beads. They're called hammer beads. Yes, yeah, some of you will have some of those at home and they would be absolutely perfect. Or you might have some pom-poms. They could be small ones. They could be large ones like these. Again, it doesn't matter. Anything that you could use as a bead, either because you can tie them together or because you can thread something through them. I've also got some wooden beads. There they are. And these are bits of bamboo with holes right the way through the middle that could be painted and used as beads. And then the last thing I have is this one, which is made out of macaroni. Make lots of things out of macaroni, don't we? It's all been painted. To save time today, I've painted some of these things already. I've painted the pasta and I've painted the wooden beads. That's the first thing you would need to do. Make sure that they're coated beautifully and that they're really, really dry. You have to choose which one of these materials you want to make. Or you might want to make several using de different kinds of materials and that's fine too. Two different things that you can use to thread your different beads are ordinary thread, but you'd need quite a big needle to get the thread through, I think. I've used that for my wooden beads. If you look closely, I've tied the very first one on so that it won't fall off, and then I put the other ones on next to them. And I've gone red, because red helps us to remember that he gave his life for us then white because God always forgives if we ask him to, green to show that we're growing to know about God and what he wants for us. The yellow one is about being faithful. The blue one is about being with God in heaven and the black remembering to do the right thing. You could do lots more beads if you wanted to so that you could turn it into a necklace be quite nice like that wouldn't it or even as a necklace with just those six beads on so that's one alternative that you could do and those are the beads that you'd use for it the second one is the hammer beads and there all I've done is again I've done them one after the other red to remember that he gave his life for us white because God will always forgive if we ask him to. Green, growing to know about God and what he wants for us. Yellow, being faithful. Blue, being with God in heaven. And black, always remembering to do the right thing. This one is on pipe cleaner. They quite nicely go right the way through the middle. You could then turn it into a bracelet of the right length. All you'd have to do would be to tie it off it's quite a nice bracelet doesn't it I'm not going to make one with bamboo because I think you can see quite easily how you would do that it's exactly the same as all of the others long if you want to make it into a necklace and short if you're wanting to make it into a bracelet the last one I will show you I need to get my needle and thread get my needle and thread and I'm going to tie a knot in one end and I'm going to thread the other end like so. Make a knot in it and then I'm simply going to push my needle right the way through the middle like so. Okay so that's red and then white Bet you're beginning to remember what each of these mean now, aren't you? And then we'll have green. And yellow. And blue. And black. I'm not 
not sure I'd want to wear this one. But I could make it into a caterpillar, couldn't I? I could give him a face and make him into a memory caterpillar. Or I could simply hang him up somewhere in my room so that the different colours will always remind me. So those are the different ways that you can make them into either a bracelet or into a necklace. If you didn't want to make a necklace or a bracelet, you might want to try your hand at this one. Exactly the same idea. But what happened this time is I drew around a foot and I coloured each of the different feet, making them go right the way down so that they were almost at the heel and then I coloured the heel a different colour and that gives me my five different spaces and then inside each one I wrote the things that we wanted to remember and there they are. I hope you enjoy your craft this week and that you enjoyed Messy Church. I look forward to seeing everyone again next time. Have a good week won't you? Bye! <laughs>